I'm Dr. Mariana Gandolfo, Associated Professor at the Department of Oral Medicine of the School of Dentistry at the University of Buenos Aires. Today we are pleased to present a case report that we have published at the International Journal of Science and Research together with Associated Professor Dr. Lense, Associated Professor Dr. Arada, Consulting Professor Dr. Aguas, and the Head Professor Dr. Adler. The case presented is entitled Secondary Oral Tuberculosis in HIV-Negative Patient. According to the World Health Organization, in 2018, tuberculosis represents a serious public health problem nowadays, with approximately 10 million new cases worldwide. Among all TB cases, 8.6% were persons living with HIV. Globally, TB is the leading cause of death due to a single infectious agent and the leading cause of death among individuals living with HIV. TB is a chronic infectious disease usually caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Oral manifestation of TB are exceedingly rare and are generally secondary to pulmonary TB. The development of extrapulmonary TB is mainly facilitated by immunosuppression of HIV. The oral manifestations of TB can be highly variable and non-specific. Therefore, they can cause difficulties in diagnosis and delay in instituting the appropriate treatment. We here in present a case of an infrequent case of secondary oral TB in an adult HIV negative patient. The aim of this case report was to emphasize the importance of considering TB in the differential clinical diagnosis of ulcers affecting the oral mucosa. A 47-year-old male patient presented for consultation at the Oral Medicine Department of the School of Dentistry at the University of Buenos Aires with a history of a smoking cigarette, weight loss, fever, chronic cough, and respiratory problems caused by polyurethane fume exposure. The patient reported the presence of painful lesion of 35 days evolution. Despite treatment with three different antibiotic, lesion didn't heal. Examination of the oral cavity revealed the presence of painful single ulcer covered with yellowish exudate, with irregular contours and indurated to touch in the dorsal surface of the tongue. No other oral mucosa lesion were observed. Physical examination show multiple small submandibular lymphadenopathies on both sides of upper neck. Based on the oral lesion of the dorsal surface of the tongue and associated lymphadenopathy presumptive diagnosis of TB and HIV co-infection was established and blastomycosis or histoplasmosis as differential diagnosis. In order to obtain diagnosis of certainty, the following diagnostic tests were indicated, sputum bacilloscopy, chest radiography, antibodies to HIV-1 and 2, and BDRL. Relevant routine investigations were normal. Results of diagnostic tests were consistent with TB. Sputum was positive for acid-fast bacillus, X-ray test, reveal cavitary lesion, treponemal test and HIV-1 and 2 antibodies were negative. The patient was referred to infectology and after about two months of drug therapy, clinical follow-up showed complete remission of the tongue ulcer. Definitive diagnosis was oral TB. Oral TB lesions may be either primary or secondary in occurrence. Secondary oral TB is the most common. 
Oral tuberculous ulcer may be the result of a spread by hematogenous or lymphatic root, but can also be caused by self-infection through infected sputum, as probably happened in the case reported. While the constant flow of saliva and its antibacterial properties protect from tubercle bacilli invasion to the oral mucosa, local trauma, pure hygiene and inflammation may promote infection. The case report presents several features coincide with literature. Tuberculous ulcer, which affects most often middle-aged individuals and the elderly, is the most frequent manifestation of secondary TB. This ulcer causes a deep pain that hinders speech and food intake. In the case presented, the situation causes weight loss in the patient. Moreover, extrapulmonary TB is common in HIV-positive individuals, but as discussed previously, the patient was HIV-negative. In addition, the patient was a heavy smoker, and tobacco is one of the risk factors associated with the development of TB. Extrapulmonary oral TB is very uncommon, and their clinical appearance is variable. This situation, particularly in a monocompetent patient, coupled with the absence of rapid diagnostic tests, can hinder and delay the start of treatment. This explains delayed diagnosis in the case reported. The patient consulted three professionals and was medicated with three different antibiotics without improvement. In this context, and given that TB remains a serious public health problem today, it is important that health professionals are aware that detection of oral lesions caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis is an effective strategy in the early diagnosis of TB, allowing the appropriate therapy administration a promptly disease control. The present study reported the presence of single tuberculous ulcer in the tongue of HIV-negative patient. This uncommon manifestation, particularly in an immunocompetent patient, should alert health professionals about the importance of considering TB in the differential diagnosis of ulcers affecting the oral mucosa to establish, without delay, diagnosis, certainty, and timely treatment of disease. We sincerely appreciate your attention.